Hi, I'm Dr. Paul Machetta, and I'm here today to tell you the six things you absolutely must have in order to hold on to in love feelings in your relationship. You know, most couples start off as soulmates. They start off loving one another as soulmates, but then they end up just living together like roommates. And we want to help you prevent that. Now, the first thing you're going to need to hold on to in love feelings an in love passion between you and your partner is a watering can. A watering can is what we use to nurture plants and flowers and that's something that you must do to one another. You must nurture one another in order for your relationship to grow strong and healthy and keep passion alive. How do you do it? Nurturing is all about the quality of attention you show one another. You know, to passers-by on the street, they get my indirect passive attention. If my neighbor's dog barks all night, that gets my negative attention. But for the love of my life, my wife, my soulmate, she gets a special kind of attention. It's affectionate attention. Attention that's infused with kindness and caring, interest and involvement. How do you do it? You do it by praising and complimenting one another often, just between the two of you and in front of friends and family. You do it by a lot of affection, physical affection, outside the bedroom, having nothing to do with sex, kissing, hugging, holding, saying I love you while you look into one another's eyes. And the third way you show this kind of special affectionate attention is being interested in the details of one another's lives. Noticing when moods change between you, uh, being uh, uh, interested in uh, when either one of you looks preoccupied and not right, finding out about it. Those are all the ways you can nurture your relationship so it stays strong, healthy, and full of in love feelings. Now the next thing you're going to need is a brown paper bag. Now who doesn't have a paper bag lying around the house? So go get yours. Now in this paper bag, what you're going to do, you're going to take your cell phone, you're going to take your Bluetooth, you're going to take your iPad, you're going to take your computer game, you're going to take your laptop and put it in this paper bag, wrap it up and put it out of the way because all those devices help you communicate fast and easy, but they don't create intimacy and they don't create emotional closeness. In order to hold on to in love passion in your relationship, you've got to communicate face to face and heart to heart. And you can't do that with electronic devices. You can't do that if you're constantly staring into one kind of screen or another. So put the devices away and make sure you look at each other so you're really seen. You listen so you really hear one another and then each of you will feel appreciated. Each of you will feel valued and that fuels passion. The next thing you're going to need is a toy. A toy. A child's pool toy. Toys remember, uh, remind us to play together. It's so important for couples who have big careers, small children and a lot of other commitments not to forget to play together. Don't let having fun fall to the bottom of your to-do list. It's important. Playing together, having something that each of you likes to do, that just the two of you do alone together, uh, reminds you of what you first saw in one another that brought you together as a couple. Playing together is a strong aphrodisiac. So make it a priority and you'll stay in love. Next, uh, next we have a very special device. I just invented this. It's soon to be uh, on the market. This, ladies and gentlemen, is very important. It's an anger meter. It measures the amount of accumulated anger building up in your relationship. We have a couple right here in the front. I'm going to ask you please to hold on to one end of that wire and you hold on to the other end. Hold hands so you have a measure of what's together between you. And I'm going to turn this on and we'll see. Ah, red. That means a lot of accumulated anger in your relationship. You better see me immediately after the filming is over to make an appointment. Um, accumulated anger. Why is that important, ladies and gentlemen? 
It's important because accumulated anger kills love and passion. You must be able to be an expert on handling your anger. And here's the deal. Most couples mishandle their anger in three common ways. They vent their anger. They let it rip and say and do a lot of hurtful things. Some people nurse their anger. They hold on to it for long periods of time, never letting it go. And then there's some people who deny being angry at all because they're pleasers. They say yes when they mean no, and the next thing you know, they've accumulated so much anger, they're ready to leave the relationship. If you don't do any of those things, you'll create some space in your awareness so you can really get that underneath most anger, there's hurt and fear. And if you turn your attention there, you'll have something really important to talk about that will help your relationship grow without stifling it under a blanket of accumulated anger. Next on the list of things you need, next on the list of things you need, ladies and gentlemen, is the sun. Here it is. Who doesn't have the sun, thankfully? Every day the sun rises in the morning and sets at night. Do we have any doubt that the sun is going to come up every day and set in the evening? No. We have absolutely no doubt. We trust unquestioned that the sun is going to come up and, and go down. Now ladies and gentlemen, that's the whole point. You have to have a level of trust in your relationship that like the sun is unquestioned. Unquestioned trust is what you need because love flowers in an environment of safety and security. You have to trust that neither one of you is going to uh, cheat on the other. You have to trust that you won't hurt, harm, or reject one another. You have to trust that you won't abandon each other in the face of anger, conflict, and disagreements like threatening divorce every time you have a fight. You have to trust that you love one another without any ulterior motives. That you don't love me because I have a family and you don't. Or because I have a lot of money. Or because uh, I have some status or you're especially beautiful. All those are ulterior motives. You have to feel loved for who you are. And you have to trust that your uh, relationship and one another will be a top priority. That's the way you create unquestioned trust in your relationship. And with unquestioned trust, passion flowers. You'll stay in love. And last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, the last thing you'll need to stay in love forever is a treasure chest. And here we have our treasure chest. You can see it's jewel-encrusted, uh, jewel-encrusted, diamond-encrusted. And now if you zoom in, you're going to see, because in a treasure chest, that's where we keep something that's special, that's rare, that's precious. And if you zoom in, you can see that what we have in the box, yes, it's a mirror. A mirror to reflect the two of you, because that is the most important thing. That is the treasure. <coughs> that's the treasure that... When you treasure it, it returns a treasure to you. It will keep you in love forever. It's the quality of your togetherness that has to be the most important thing in your day-to-day -day life. Don't lose sight of it. Treasure it. The feeling between you, the climate between you. Keep it friendly. Keep it warm. Stay emotionally connected and it will pay you dividends wildly beyond any material wealth that you could ever have. And you take care of your relationship, as we said, by nurturing one another, by not accumulating anger, by making sure you play together, by, <clears throat> by coming through for one another and building unquestioned trust. Those are the ways you can stay in love forever. Now, if you want to know more about all the things we talked about today, you can check out our book, are you roommates or soulmates? It's available on Amazon.com, and you can also go to our website, uh, DrsMachetta.com. I say we because my wife, Evelyn, wrote the book with me. She's also a therapist, and all our work is the product of our joint collaboration. Thank you very much for your attention.